Let's talk about Go. So Go is a relatively new language from Google. And here's an example of a com computation of factorial. So this is an iterative solution of how to compute factorial. So you can see it has a for loop for i equals 1 to 5. It multiplies factorial by i, and then it prints the result. And so if you look at this, and if you know C, this should look kind of like a friendlier version of C, maybe. It's got the familiar printf, it's got for loops, it's got functions. But that's a little bit uh, deceiving because at its heart, Go actually has a very powerful mechanism for communicating between multiple concurrent processes. And so let's take a look at a more interesting example. So here's an example that defines a little server that listens on two channels. So here we've got our average server in a little box here. And it has two arguments here. So here there's an incoming channel that contains floats and it has requests coming in on another channel. So let's draw this one here. So on this one, this is the incoming channel and it has floats coming on it and this other channel we'll, we'll explain in a second but it has requests coming so some sort of request and what's it doing if you can see here well it's setting n equal to zero to start and it's setting a sum equal to zero then this is an infinite for loop then that means loop forever Here's a select, so the select will look at the cases, and in this case, it's looking at channels. So it will select whichever channel has available reads or writes, and it will do that one. And so if there's an available data on incoming, then it will assign it to V, it'll increment N, and add V to the sum. So you can imagine this is, it's calculating a running sum and the number of data elements it's seen so it can compute the average. Then if it gets a request on the request channel, it computes the average, so the sum divided by the, the total number of data elements it's seen, and then it sends that on the response channel. So this is, this is kind of interesting. So the, the incoming channel is just floats flowing into this average server just going one way coming in on this request line there are requests coming in and those requests which we're calling R down here we use that R and open up the request to get the response and that's actually a channel and so we're sending the average that we've seen so far onto that channel that we got in the request so there's actually a response that's included in the request, and we're going back out through that response to whoever requested it. And so that's kind of interesting. So you can imagine like there might be another uh, requester here. So this guy over here requests um, the current average. And so he has a request with a, res a different response so his response channel is there, and that's packaged up in this request, and that's all sent to this average server. Then the average server replies over that response back to this guy. So there are these two different clients, and they're both sending requests to this channel, and they're getting responses, and so the, the server knows who to respond to because it's in the request itself. So this is cool because there's channels, and then we're sending channels over channels to know where to send the response. So this is a, a neat little server here that it's doing some calculations. It's very efficiently you know, selecting which thing to do so it knows if it's getting data, here's how to handle it. If it gets requests, here's how to handle it. There's no issues with multiple threads reading n and sum, but we are allowed to have multiple uh, requesters, and we could also have multiple sources of data coming in. So there could be some other source of data writing to this channel on this incoming channel that that's okay too so you can have all these things happening concurrently and the language can can deal with it and keep track of things very well so it's pretty cool